Today I'm going to walk you through on how we can build a list and add navigation to the Landmarks app. This video is based on Apple's Swift UI Essentials Building List and Navigation section. Apple did a great job in creating these tutorials and I wanted to do a YouTube version of it and I hope you're going to like the series. In the videos you will notice that some terms in the Apple tutorials are different from what I'm using because the Apple tutorials were written prior to the newer Xcode version I'm using today. You may want to get back to this video in the future or get notified of new videos. All you need to do is click the subscribe button and if you want to get notifications about new videos, click the bell icon. Now that the basic landmark detail view had been set up, you need to provide a way for users to see the full list of landmarks and to view the details about each location. We'll create views that can show information about any landmark and dynamically generates a scrolling list that a user can tap to see a detailed view for a landmark. To fine tune the UI, we'll use Xcode's canvas to render multiple previews at different device sizes. In the first tutorial, we hard coded information to all of the custom views. Here you will learn to pass data into the custom views for display. Get started by downloading the starter project and familiarizing yourself with the sample data. You'll find the download link in the description below. In the project navigator, in the models folder, choose landmark.swift to open it in the editor. Landmark.swift declares a landmark structure that stores all of the landmark information the app needs to display and imports an array of landmark data from landmark data.json. In the project navigator, in the resources folder, select landmark data.json to open in the editor. We'll use this sample data throughout the remainder of this tutorial and for all that follow. Note that content view type from creating and combining views is now named Landmark Detail. We'll be creating several more view types in this video and each of the following tutorials. The first view we'll build in this tutorial is a row for displaying details about each landmark. This row view stores information in a property for the landmark it displays so that one view can display any landmark. Later, we'll combine multiple rows into a list of landmarks. Let us create a new SwiftUI view and name it Landmark Row.Swift. If the preview isn't visible, show the canvas by selecting Editor, then Canvas in the menu, and in the canvas, click Resume. In Landmark Row, we will add a stored property called Landmark. The Landmark property is of Landmark type. When we added Landmark property, the preview stopped working because the Landmark Row type needs a Landmark instance during initialization. To fix the preview, we'll need to modify the preview provider. In the preview static property of Landmark Row under underscore previews, Add the landmark parameter to the landmark row initializer, specifying the first element of the landmark data array. Currently, the preview displays the hello world text. With that fix, we can now build the layout for the row. Next, we are going to embed the existing text view in an H tag. Then modify the text view to use the landmark's name property and complete the row by adding an image before the text view. Xcode's canvas automatically recognizes and displays any type in the current editor that conforms to the preview provider protocol. A preview provider returns one or more views with options to configure the size and device. You can customize the return content from a preview provider to render exactly the previews that are most helpful to you. In Landmark Row Previews, update the Landmark parameter 
to use the second element in the landmark data array. You can see the preview immediately changes to show the second sample landmark instead of the first. Use the preview layout modifier to set a size that approximates a row in a list. You can use a group to return multiple previews from a preview provider. Wrap the return row in a group and add the first row back again. A group is a container for grouping view content. Xcode renders the group's child views as separate previews in the canvas. To simplify the code, move the preview layout call to the outside of the group's child declarations. A view's children inherit the view's contextual settings such as preview configurations. The code you write in a preview provider only changes what Xcode displays in the canvas. When you use SwiftUI's list type, you can display a platform-specific list of views. The elements of the list can be static, like the child views of the stacks we've created so far, or dynamically generated. You can even mix static and dynamically generated views. Let us create a new SwiftUI view. We will call it landmark list.swift. Replace the default text view with a list and provide landmark row instances with the first two landmarks at the list children. Now the preview shows the two landmarks rendered in a list style that's appropriate for iOS. Instead of specifying a list element individually, you can generate rows directly from a collection. You can create a list that displays elements of collection by passing your collection of data in a closure that provides a view for each element in the collection. The list transforms each element in the collection into a child view by using the supplied closure. First, we remove the two static landmark rows and instead pass landmark data to the list initializer. Lists work with identifiable data. You can make your data identifiable in one of two ways by passing along with your data a key path to a property that uniquely identifies each element, or by making your data type conform to the identifiable protocol. Complete the dynamically generated list by returning a landmark row from the closure. This creates one landmark row for each element in the landmark data array. Next, we'll simplify the list code by adding identifiable conformance to the landmark type. Switch to the landmark that Swift and declare conformance to the identifiable protocol. The identifiable protocol requires us to conform to its ID property. The ID property is a hashable, or a type that conforms to the hashable protocol. You would use the identifiable protocol if you want different types to be uniformly identified by the same ID property. Since the landmark type already has the ID property required by identifiable protocol, there's no more work to do. Now switch back to landmark list.swift and remove the ID parameter. From now on, we'll be able to use collections of landmark elements directly. Now the list renders properly, but you cannot tap an individual landmark to see the landmark's detail page yet. We will add navigation capabilities to a list by embedding it in a navigation view, and then nesting each row in a navigation link to set up a transition to a destination view. First, we embed the dynamically generated list of landmarks in a navigation view. Then call the navigation bar title modifier method to set the title of the navigation bar when displaying the list. Inside the list closure, wrap the return row in a navigation link, specifying the landmark detail view as the destination. We can try out the navigation directly in the preview by switching to live mode. Click the live preview button and tap a landmark to visit the detail page.
The landmark detail view still uses hard-coded details to show its landmark. Just like the landmark row, the landmark detail type and the views it comprises need to use the landmark property as the source for their data. Starting with the child views, we'll convert circle image, map view, and then landmark detail to display data that's passed in, rather than hard coding each row. In circle image.swift, we will add a stored image property to circle image. This is a common pattern when building views using Swift UI. Your custom views will often wrap and encapsulate a series of modifiers for a particular view. Update the preview provider to pass the image of Turtle Rock. In map view that Swift, add a coordinate property to the map view and convert the code to use the property instead of hard coding the latitude and longitude. Then update the preview provider to pass the coordinate to the first landmark in the data array. In landmark detail that Swift, add a landmark property to the landmark detail type. Then update the preview to use the first landmark from landmark data. Pass the required data down to your custom types. Finally, call the navigation bar title modifier to give the navigation bar a title when showing the detail view. In the scene delegate that Swift class, switch the root view of the app to be landmark list. An app starts with the root view defined in the scene delegate when running standalone in the simulator instead of the preview. In landmark list at Swift, pass the current landmark to the destination landmark detail, then switch to the live preview to see the detail view show the correct landmarks when you navigate from the list. Next, we'll add the code to the landmark list previous preview provider to render previews of the list view at different device sizes. By default, previews render at the size of the device in the active scheme. You can change the preview device by calling the preview device modifier method. We start by changing the current list preview to render at the size of an iPhone SE. Then you can provide the name of any device as it appears in Xcode scheme menu. Within the list preview, embed the landmark list in a for each instance using an array of device names as the data. For each operates on collections the same way as the list, which means you can use it anywhere you can use a child view, such as in stacks, lists, groups, and more. When the elements of your data are simple value types, like the strings you're using here, you can use backslash that self as key path to the identifier. Use the preview display name modifier to add the device name as labels for the previews. You can experiment with different devices to compare the renderings of your views all from the canvas. We started with a detailed view on the previous tutorial. And on this video, we were able to build a list that is dynamically populated from a JSON file, then we added navigation to the detail view. On this video, you learn about how to create the row view and use it in a list. How to create a list that displays dynamic data. I also demonstrated how you can set up navigation between the list view and detail view with data being passed to the child views. And lastly, you learn that you can dynamically generate previews in the canvas. On the next video, I will show you how you can add user interaction to your app. Users will be able to mark a landmark as their favorite and filter it using a toggle button. To receive notifications about new videos, click the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications from this channel.